Hello, I'm, I'm Carrie Vandiver, co-owner of Golf Course Trades. In our 30 years plus years of experience, Golf Course Trades has long admired the golf industry's commitment to preserving and supporting the environment. So that's what makes it such a pleasure to be able to introduce to you to Audubon International's Executive Director, Christine Kane, who oversees the Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary Program for Golf. Welcome, Christine. Hi, thank you so much for having me. We are so pleased to have you here with us and getting all these views on our extended reach on the internet. One of Golf Course Trade's major contributors, Linda Parker, is such an enthusiastic supporter of you guys and has wrote several articles, which you can find on our website, golfcoursetrades.com. So it's a privilege to actually meet you and talk to you. Oh, well, thank you so much. We're, I'm very excited to be here with you. Um, we love working with Golf Course Trade, so I think it's a great match. Well, let's get started. Well, can you describe the program's objectives and mission? Um, sure. Well, maybe what I should do is, you know, we, we like to think that everybody's aware of who we are and what we do, but um, maybe I should just back up for a minute and um, let you all know that Audubon, we're actually celebrating our 35th anniversary this year. So we have been doing this for quite some time. Thank you very much. And um, we are, you know, the trusted name and recognized expert in certification, environmental certification. We do work a lot with the golf industry, different aspects of the golf industry from, you know, direct courses, individual courses, municipal courses, private courses, um, also resort courses. But we also work outside of the um, Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary certification that we have. We have a number of certifications that are for communities, for instance. So we have a lot of um, homeowner associations or around golf courses that participate. We have something called green lodging. So while that's available to um, any kind of um, business that involves lodging, we're very clear there, but we do have a lot of, um, you know, golf course clubhouses, for instance, that they provide some sort of lodging as part of their work. So that could qualify. Um, one thing I wanted to say is we have several different, well, we actually have, um, five different certifications that we offer right now. Um, and as for golf, directly in golf, we have two. So we're gonna spend most of our time today talking about the uh, Cooperative Sanctuary Program, which is our largest, is our first. So when we started off, we uh, I think we certified our first courses way back in 1989. But we also have another one for uh, called our Signature Sanctuary Certification, and that is for golf courses that are either um, being built new, for instance, from the ground up, or uh, existing courses that are going through a significant renovation. So we try to cover all the bases, golf courses that are currently operating and want to um, be better about the sustainability that they incorporate in their everyday management practices, as well as new courses or courses that are renovating so they can upgrade their practices. So now let's talk a little bit specifically about the Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary certification. Um, I did mention that that is the one focused for existing golf courses. And we all know that, um, you know, sustainability is really a hot button issue these days. We're hearing more and more about it. Um, you know, years ago, we used to, when we were talking to uh, golf course superintendents about potentially joining or general managers uh, at properties, one of the things we used to say was, that you would stand out from the crowd and from your competition for doing this kind of um, work at your course. And I would say in you know less than 10 years, that has totally shifted to now you will stand out for not doing this type of work at your course because people are much more on board with sustainability in their everyday personal lives and looking for that time of type of commitment from the businesses that they work with. And, and even more, I, I think we have to say from the pandemic, I think we all learned the benefits of outdoor recreation and having spaces, safe spaces that we can do that relatively close to home so that we didn't have to undertake a long journey, for instance, to get to maybe a national park or something. And golf was recognized early on as a, you know an outdoor recreation, safe recreation could be done socially distant uh, and so we, you know, we certainly have seen benefit and increased interest um, in all of our programs. So we get a lot of questions um, about how this is 
playing out in the golf industry. So real, a lot of interest and need to, to keep moving that forward. Golf is certainly doing a lot on that front already. We definitely need to be doing more about uh, promoting and explaining what we're doing, but we can also keep expanding and getting more courses involved in that. So with the uh, ACSP program, which we feel, of course, is a great place to start, um, it does focus on um, six different areas to obtain certification. The first one is, as you might imagine, creating a site assessment. So you know what you have, you know, the starting point, you know, right, you know where you're beginning, your baseline, and then an environmental plan for how you want to look at things and move forward. So that has to be done first. That's the first step. And once that's approved, the next uh, steps you can do in any order that makes the most sense for you and your um, op operations. So they include um, chemical use reduction and safety, water quality issues, water conservation issues, um, wildlife habitat management, and outreach and education. And I just want to also say we always try to point out that one of the things we really feel strongly about uh, is a science foundation for all of the work that we do, but also the importance of outreach and education. We do include that in all of our certifications, no matter what segment we're working on, because we do, you know, not only do we want the property managers and the golf course superintendents to get credit for all the work they're doing, because this is a lot of work to get this certification. Um, but we want you to get the message out to your surrounding community, how, you know, you, and that can be defined in a number of ways from if it's a private club from members, um, it could be a geographic situation, it can be an environmental situation such as watershed, you know, you might define it within a watershed because we know water is becoming a big issue, even bigger issue, I guess I should say, um, you know, your surrounding community members so that they understand that you understand the role you play in the nature and ecology uh, of the area where you, you live, where the course is. And, you know, you want to build those relationships and those connections. It's really important in today's market. So how would a, a director of golf or a golf course superintendent kind of sell their course managers and their decision makers on becoming a, a sanctuary uh, certified course? Great, great question. Um, you know, there are certainly different approaches to this, right? So we, we, there's the basic, we might all say, oh, we should do this because it's just the right thing to do. And right. it is. And many, many of the superintendents believe that strongly and start from that position. Um, from a business point of view, um, there are certainly um, cost savings that can be recognized in both uh, inputs and other supplies, as well as re uh, reallocating labor. And um, marketing, is there's certainly marketing advantages to your current members or your potential future members, and as I said, your neighbors to, to your property. And um, we have um, some statistics that, you know, indicate doing it before you'd stood out or, you know, if you did do it, you could stand out in a good way. And today, if you don't do it, you could stand out in a not so good way. Right. So, and we do have a number of, of um, you know, companies that we work with within the industry that have incorporated um, having their courses cer certified in their sustainability policies for the company. So, you know, it's also coming um, from that side of the um, equation too. Um, I know that it's hard work to get certified, but um, you talked about some of the benefits. So how long does it take to get certified and how hard is it? Well, uh, you know, I don't want to put people off by saying that it's so hard, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it is a lot of work. And our um, superintendents who have gained that for their pro properties are justifiably proud of doing that. I don't I think, think there's a superintendent that. that's not proud of their course. That is absolutely And they should true. be. They should be. And I, you absolutely. know, I'm, I'm getting um, a third party validation for the work that you're doing on your course is in, very important. It's not just you saying, oh, look at the great stuff we did. It's right. a third party like ourselves coming in and validating the work that you've done compared to scientific principles and so that you can say, look, here, we, we brought in an outside 
um, group to validate what we're doing here. Um, as I mentioned, you know, those six stages, um, you know, they each have, uh, of course, requirements underneath them, you know, testing requirements, uh, mapping, um, you know, implementation steps within the policy that we talked about. What we find is, you know, depending on uh, the operational situation for your courses. So we, we have members in 34 countries around the world, but our biggest number of members are in North America because that's where the majority of golf courses are, right? So, you know, in, in uh, the Southern part of the United States, you know, there's not really an off season. There might be a hot season, but there's not really an off season. But if you get to the northern part of the United States or Canada, there is kind of an off season. So you, we do see a, a bit of a seasonality to when people find the time to work on the materials to submit their certification. Um, or, you know, some courses are lucky enough to have interns from some of the turf grass programs or even other environmental programs at colleges in their area. And uh, these set steps are great intern projects to how your timing works to be able to get the materials together. And you can submit them as you go along. You don't have to keep them and submit them all at one time. You can submit them as you go along. So you can submit individual efforts um, as it's happening instead of trying to launch everything at once. That's well, and you know, it's nice. It's, it, sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? If you said, I have to get all six of these things done. Um, and But we also want to you know, recognize the, what you have accomplished and the forward process. So right. we, that's why we make say, you know, send them in as you get them done. And then it's not as overwhelming and uh, you know, uses, makes a better use of your time. Well, I had to take a success story off your website that is about Harrison, Tennessee, just because Golf Course Trades is located headquarters in Crossville, Tennessee. So I was very surprised at the chemical reduction. Um, that's a big cost in a golf course. Um, and I was surprised at reading that. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Did they change their grass to make the chemical reduction? Well, there's, a, you know, there's a number of ways that you can do that. Um, it can be changing the type of grass, which we don't now. I want to say we're not setting that as a requirement in our program. Right. So I don't want anybody to think that you would have to, you know, change the type of grass that you're using, or immediately change your irrigation system, you know, or anything like that. But it is. Um, there are a number of ways that you can do that. So for instance, um, in your analysis of your property in the beginning, you might um, be looking at your uh, areas, what you can take out of play. So if you convert um, a current turf grass area to native plantings, for instance, so mm -hmm. you reduce your mowings, then you would reduce your inputs or any fertilizer or other types of uh, chemicals, you could reduce your watering needs, um, you know, we encourage, highly encourage uh, integrated pest management, IPM, um, scouting, you know, for what and applications that are necessary as opposed to um, and focused as opposed to broad applications. Many, you know, again, many things that superintendents are doing anyway, but may not be thinking of that in terms of the, their approach to sustainability on the course. And, you know, what we find is that once folks get started, they get very excited and they realize that they can change things up and make big impacts right away. Well, uh, it made me think about um, the stories that we get on golf course trades about the renovation of the irrigation and the renovation of the uh, golf green and the fairway or moving things back to the original legacy architects. Right. Um, during those processes, I'm assuming that they can contact you and say, how can I make this renovation more sustainable while I'm doing the renovations? And those would be little steps to work through this process. Absolutely. We, and we provide our members with technical assistance and that's everything from, of course, you know, Aunt answering the phone for your specific question <laughs> to technical bulletins to the handbook that we have that we supply to our members to help guide them in their um, certification and their other activities. You know, we do not come in and this is sort of a myth that we hear sometimes. We do not come in and tell you how to manage your golf course. We know mm -hmm. that every situation is different. 
Um, you know, I mentioned, you know, the watershed you're in, the um, growing zone that you're in, the type of grasses you're using, the seasonality of play on your course. So we want to work with you to improve the situation on your course in terms of sustainability. It's not a one size fits all situation. Christine, golf course superintendents usually don't lock wildlife on their horses, geese, et cetera. So, and you're encouraging wildlife to be on the courses by building birdhouses and habitats. So what are the benefits of having the wildlife on your course? Oh, well, thanks for asking. Um, it's important to realize that, you know, we have to go back a little bit and oftentimes golf courses, when they were built, were outside of, um, you know, urban areas. And as growth has happened, they've often been surrounded now by the city or the community. And uh, they now offer sort of an oasis within an urban area for wildlife. So they can provide benefits as wildlife corridors to allow uh, wildlife to move from one place to another. Um, they can be important parts of migration um, areas for certain types of birds and or wildlife. Um, also for, uh, you know, let's mention monarch butterflies, which we're all hearing about. And, you know, their population has gone down 90% in the last mm -hmm. um, 10 years or so. And we actually also have a, a program for that called Monarchs in the Rock, where we are working with golf courses to um, plant appropriate, regionally appropriate milkweed seed on their course and supporting pollinator um, plants to enhance the migrate the annual migration that happens. So actually, if anybody wants to talk to us about that too, we'd be happy. You can go to monarchsintherough.org. But as um, you know, it it's important to notice um, there are certainly some troublemakers among the wildlife uh, <laughs> golf course operations. But you know, members and golfers do love to see the wildlife on mm -hmm. the course. Um, they're an ecosystem in that sort of uh, with that you know, situation of wildlife habitat. This is all wonderful information. What do you consider the future for Audubon International to be in the certification program? Oh, well, it's, uh, I have to say, I think it's very bright. Uh, as I said, people are, mm -hmm. are getting more um, excited about these types of things. Consumers are looking for them and you know, um, superintendents and assistant superintendents are realizing the benefits for them and their course. You know, as I said, it helps to keep existing members engaged to help recruit future members. Uh, it can certainly play into recruiting your workforce um, to recognize, you know, for people to recognize that you consider this um, as part of the you know, important management of your course and the operations of your business. So there's a, certainly a lot of different ways that you can think about it. Um, what we also hear from superintendents is that now they are, um, you know, coming, uh, reaching across the departments, for instance, within okay. their um, golf course to, you know, because they don't often hand, you know, they don't handle the marketing of the course. Right. Right? So they, um, but they want to make sure they get the information to the people that do. Um, they want, you know, that there are more and more of them are doing blogs, writing articles for the, you know, company newsletter. So they're making sure to get that information out there and let amazing to read and send out and let people know that the myth of a golf course just being empty grass or an environmental mistake um, is not really true. Yeah, but I say to people all the time, you know, this is not the golf course that you are thinking of from 20 or 30 years ago anymore um, for many reasons, not only business operations and costs, but as I said, you know, the changing um, face of the people who are working at golf courses and they're bringing their understanding and their sensibilities to their jobs at the course and they want to um, extend that. And, you know, uh, as in today's world, we know that water or many of the areas of the United States, particularly, but also around the world are, you know, facing dry and drought conditions. And we do see, of course, mention of golf courses coming up in that situation as water users. But the, um, you know, the amount of water used for golf courses for irrigation is 
so much lower than what we think of from say 20 years ago yes. with uh, the different types of grasses that have been used, as I mentioned, going back to native plantings, not watering much more efficient irrigation systems with directed heads that can be you know, controlled from the superintendent's phone and uh, only uh, targeted to what is needed. So it's a huge difference in water use, in the types of inputs, pesticides and fertilizers uh, that are no longer used on courses. And um, it's, it's time for people to realize that golf's environmental footprint has changed greatly and is much, much improved over what we may stereotypically believe from years past. And I think that is what admires me about your company the most is that you're getting that word out to let people know that it's not it's not your golf course from 20 years ago right exactly exactly well i really appreciate your time and doing this interview and i hope it helps get your word out and let even more golf courses because wouldn't it be a great goal for every golf course in america to be certified it would be fantastic and and we have um probably about 2,500 courses uh, enrolled in our programs right now. Everything from, as I mentioned, individual courses. Oh, for you in Tennessee, we have all of the uh, state, Tennessee State Park golf courses are in the mm -hmm. ACS program and certified. They're doing great things there. Um, you know, we have private clubs, we have public clubs, those at Band and Dudes on the West Coast. So, you know, we are real, really here for any type of golf facility. So don't, you know, don't think, oh, I have to be a, you know, big. I'm too small. Or, right. right, or I'm too small because, you know, we keep our costs as low as we possibly can. Oh, and I should probably mention that because in honor of our 35th anniversary, we are um, doing a 35th anniversary offer. So for the first 35 courses, new courses who want to enroll in the ACSP program, we have a code on our website and you can use that code and the uh, initial enrollment fee will be waived as part of our 35, 35th anniversary celebration. Wonderful. I'll make sure to put that in the description of this YouTube video so oh, that they'll be you. able to grab it as well. Perfect. <laughs> but one less link that they have to go through is That's always great. a good thing. Superintendents are very hardworking people. Um, that's really all I have for you. And I really appreciate your time. And it's been a wonderful talking to you. Thank and you. I really appreciate it. It was nice to meet you. I'm happy to say hi to all of the, your uh, readers and subscribers, many of whom are our members and looking forward to connecting with you all in the future.